Hello, hello, everybody. So welcome to something a little bit different. Hold on, let me take down that uh, timer there. So for those who don't uh, follow all the community posts and all that fun jazz and maybe aren't up to date, I have been getting very, very busy with uh, with my music career. Hold on, make sure the levels are good. Can you guys hear me? Is everything good? Make sure we're good, chat. Are the levels good? Am I a little bit too quiet? I feel like the music is a little bit loud. All right, you know what? Hold on. We're going to swap out this music for... Hold on. Actually, you know what? Quick advertisement. If you didn't already know, uh, the first uh, volume of the soundtrack from GTA Biographies from Season 1 is and has been for a little while now available on iTunes. So you can check that out. We're going to put that on in the background. That should work. There we go. Beautiful. Anyway, so, today we're going to try something a little bit different. I am going to try and cheat a little bit, and I thought it might actually be just a fun experience too. So we're going to basically make a video on the fly. So it's not a stream of a game, it's going to be a stream of a video idea I had. But if there's anything that I'm good at, it's extemporaneous talking, you know, ranting about shit and just talking. So. We're going to go through my video idea. Instead of having a, a long-ass script, which is always the part of the video that takes the longest fucking time, we're going to we're gonna go through it here. Now, I'm going to... I'm not going to ignore chat, but I'm going to be focused on, on actually going through this topic. And if you would like to, you know, definitely insert your opinion and have me respond to you 100%, throw in some donations into either Super Chats or Streamlabs. The link below for Streamlabs or uh, for PayPal.me. All right. So... I get asked a lot, quite a bit, by by many of you here in the in the audience right now. Face cam? No, not because I'm I'm afraid of face cam. I just it, the only camera I use is my uh, my phone, and it's just really annoying. Anyway, so because of GTA biographies, I am often asked, "Who is my favorite GTA protagonist?" or or a variation of said question, "Who's the best GTA protagonist? Who's the most relatable?" Whatever it is. So I figured I'm going to make a video to go through that piece by piece. We're going to go chronologically through. And yes, yes, we are skipping the 2D era protagonists. You know why we're skipping the 2D era protagonists? Because they have no fucking story. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know, man. I actually, uh, when I started to write the script for this, I mentioned the fact that I probably it's probably you, Raphael. The, the, the one guy who seems to... Not the one guy, should be something... There is a particular person, I think it's Raphael here, who, who likes to uh, make make the representation for the 2D era known. So I can, I can respect that. So, we're going to go through all of the protagonists here. And we're going to... I, I've decided to narrow it down to two different sort of uh, categories or metrics that we're going to use. So, relatability and how much fun the character is to play as. Because uh, people always ask me, and I always you know, feel the, me the need to meander into multiple versions of the question, like, well, it depends on what you mean, by favorite, blah, 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 blah. So we're gonna go through all that, one by one, and maybe at the end, uh, we'll, we'll have like a, a numeral, numeral? We'll have like numbers to put to it anyway. So we're gonna scale them on one to 10 on how relatable they are to me, and how much fun I have playing as them. So, as you can tell by the music playing right now, we are going to start with Mr. Claude Speed. Sorry, sorry, just Claude. Claude Speed is GTA 2. So, <laughs> and I'm going to use the background of, uh, of biographies here, just as a little bit of background video. So, Claude. Well, here's the thing about Claude. There's not a whole lot that we really know about him. I mean, he's a fucking mute character. I think... Now, a lot, of, a lot of this is, like, retroactive. But for me, Claude is kind of one of the most psycho of all the protagonists because you don't know what he's thinking. He's like, you know, what the f you can't get a read on the guy, you know? And, and he goes on incredibly long, tedious missions of revenge, effectively, with no remorse for anybody he kills. He seems to have no real, like, affection for anybody even for Catalina necessarily, like before she tried to kill him. So, Claude is just a straight up psychopath, so I gotta give him a really low number for relatability. I'm gonna go with straight up zero. Maybe one, 
but like he's not exactly relatable. However, he is. I've, I've I have a lot more fun playing as Claude these days than I used to back in the day. Um, I never really cared that much. As I get older, it's just more fun to kind of when you're playing GTA 3 to go into that full psycho mode because. You know, a lot of the time when I'm playing GTA, depending on who, what game it is, I, I sort of role-play. Like with a lot of games, you know, and I, I act like a little bit like how that character might act, I expect them to act. And Claude can just, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Because he's kind of like Trevor, you know, he's just complete psycho, but maybe even more so than Trevor. Because again, you don't know what the fuck he's thinking. You know, so I'm, I'm going to go with Claude gets a 1 in relatability. And for fun to play as, let's see, oh, what am I going to give him for a fun to play as? I'm going to give him a six. And maybe we'll adjust some of this as we go. I'm going to write this down. All right, so Claude gets a one and a six. So there you go. That there, There's Claude. Let me see if there's anything else I want to mention about Claude before we move on to Tommy. I don't know, there's just not a whole lot of characterization to Claude. I mean, which makes sense. It was, you know, the very first, not the very first, but the first time in the 3D era that uh, they tried to really do a more kind of elaborate, connected story. So, and they were also kind of, I think part of the reason he's mute is a carryover from, uh, from the older GTAs where the characters didn't speak at all. But who knows? But, there's not a whole lot to say about Claude, so let's move on to a more interesting character. And, uh, let me cue up the appropriate music, too. There we go. So, now we gotta take a look at one of everyone's favorites, although I'm gonna be saying that quite a few times here. Is this footage gonna be a regular video? Yes, I'm probably going to, uh... I might mix the video, the stream down into a video, or I might just leave it as is. But yeah, that is sort of the plan. We're making a video on the fly here, y'all. So, Vice City, or more appropriately, Tommy Versetti. So what do we know about Tommy Versetti? I'm going to be showing a little bit of my, my, uh, my gaps in knowledge here, because it's been a long time since I wrote all the episodes for Season 1. I definitely know more than maybe, like, you know, your average player but I'm going to forget some shit here. Anyway, so Tommy Rossetti. Let's see, we know that he was almost certainly, like, uh, not necessarily poor, but his dad worked at a fucking printing press and helped him clean rollers. So he probably wasn't rolling in cash, and he eventually falls into fucking working in the mafia and all this shit. But we're never really given like you know elaborate details on what happened to him wow that was good timing on the on the music track there oh uh, hey, hey 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 play the right music it's now it's fucking i didn't tell you to put on goddamn shuffle turn off shuffle you bastard all right all right and we'll skip ahead here okay so he joins the mafia and then eventually becomes like one of their best hitmen and then some crazy shit goes down with the hardwood butchery gets arrested and then all the shit happens that we know about so Tommy is I mean Tommy's kind of a psycho too but he's like he's not quite the level of psycho as like a Claude just because of the fact that we get to hear more of what he's thinking but he's still a pretty fucking massive psycho I mean I don't know if anyone can deny that I mean he doesn't let's see who, do, who does Tommy actually show like affection for in the slightest um, hmm. I guess Ken a little bit, but really not much, especially considering what he, ev he eventually cuts him off. Uh, I guess Mercedes, but if you consider the stuff that was cut from Tommy, oh yeah, the old yeah, that's true. Ernest Kelly, he did he did care for Ernest Kelly. Which also makes me think that he, because he, uh, the way he treats Ernest seems to indicate that's how a similar relationship he had with his father. So, he probably had at least some kind of a positive relationship with his father, which is good. Or at least, you know, it shows that he, he wasn't completely incapable of having affection for anybody. But he is still pretty, like, you know, serial killer emotionally detached, doesn't give a shit. 
and I mean, he's a drug dealer, so it's appropriate for him. But all of this boils down to, I mean, he's got more relatability than a Claude, certainly, but it can't be that much more. So I think for relatability, I'm going to give Tommy a 2. Because remember, this is, this is me, right? So I, I have to be how much I can relate to him. And can't necessarily relate very much to all of the crazy shit Tommy does. Now, fun to play as, on the other hand. Hmm. See, this is hard. This is why I said earlier I might have to go back and change it. Because I gotta think about this. Do I have more fun playing as Tommy or as Claude? Oh, this is the problem with putting numbers on it. I'm gonna say I have a little bit more fun playing with Tommy just because he has more personality. But I like playing as Claude more than I used to. So if I gave Claude a 6, I think I'm gonna give Tommy a 7 for fun to play as. So I said 2 and 7. So we got 1 up from Claude on both accounts. So yeah, Tommy, definitely higher on the Psycho rating. But, I don't know, there's not, there's not a whole lot that I can relate to. Because I'm, I'm trying to be like, you know, the, as I've said in many of my other live streams before, for the regulars who've watched that shit. You know, like, you have to kind of view it from, from the perspective of if this person was real, versus from the perspective of just having fun and playing the game. Which is kind of why I have the two categories, relatability and fun. And that's, those are kind of how I'm, part of how I'm thinking about them. Oh, God. Sorry, hold on. Never stop being stuffed. Literally permanent. Okay, so let's move on to the next character. One of everyone's favorites. <laughs> Again, I'm going to say that a few times here. And let's advance the music, too. Oh, give me a second. Sorry. Oh, I probably should have got some Kleenex before I did this. For those of you who doubted the, the, what I've said before, that I'm literally perpetually stuffed, here's evidence. We're literally months later, and I'm still always like this. In fact, you know what? Because I'm gonna, probably going to edit this down again later, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab some Kleenex. I'll be right back, guys. Two seconds. Hold on. Alrighty, let's try that again. From the top. Alright. So next up, we have everyone's favorite gangbanger from the 3D era, Carl Johnson. So this is the first time we really get a... We actually get like a decent amount of information on what their life was like. I mean, we get little hints and bits for Tommy. We get basically nothing for Claude. But with Carl, we actually do get a decent idea of where he comes from and how he, how he gets to where he is. So, also something to keep in mind here is I'm not considering all the potential, like, additional psychopathy that comes from all the rampaging you can do as part of my analysis. Because if you did, then it just becomes kind of, they're all insane. They're all beyond insane and beyond redemption. I mean, arguably they might already be. But anyway, so Carl. Carl is... I mean, again, because we know more about him, he's not necessarily as much of a psychopath, but then again, knowing what he does, maybe he's even worse. The thing about Carl, though, is he finally, he actually does have, like, several people that he shows affection for, so it's not like Tommy, where you struggle to even think of people that he genuinely cares for. Ernest Kelly's probably the only one Tommy genuinely cares for. I, I, maybe Mercedes, but because of the, the, the nature of all the shit being cut, we really don't know. With Carl, you have sweet, you have 
Ryder and Smoke before he killed them, which sounds kind of fucked up when you put it that way, but you know. We have Kendall, presumably Brian, before he accidentally got him killed, at least the way that, you know, the game puts it. But, and his mom. So at least we have that he loved his family, at the very least. And he had multiple friends, you know, that he was strong or, or, or had a strong relationship with, even though he was a complete psycho. So he's got to be more relatable than either Tommy or Claude. Also, there's the fact that, that Carl is poor as shit, and I can relate to that. I don't think I was necessarily quite as poor as Carl was, but I wasn't that far off, so I can definitely relate to that. Now, I didn't get into gang culture, but there also wasn't a huge gang scene in my city. Who knows? Who knows? Guinness gangbanger, maybe, in, a, in an alternate life. But it didn't happen. So I can't relate to that part, but I can relate to... I mean, I've seen enough of, like, uh, you know, read enough and, and, and seen enough to understand what kind of a, a lifestyle the game is going for to create the character of Carl Johnson. And then what you do in the game is, you know, kind of exaggerated, ridiculous... But at least the, the basis for the type of character, the type of uh, person he's supposed to be, is relatable. So I'm going to give Carl, let's see, now, but also keep it, keeping in mind all the shit that he does throughout the course of the game. Which has definitely got to lower his relatability, because he does a bunch of crazy shit. Okay, wait, wait, I'm remembering now. Carl does some seriously fucking messed up shit. I mentioned this in, in the last, one of my last videos. I mentioned, uh, when he kills Mad Dog's manager. And, and his girlfriend. And is like a complete psycho about it. Like, just no remorse, laughs at, at killing two effectively innocent people who did nothing to him and nothing to anyone he knows. Or even likes, at least. So, Carl is... If anything, it's it's almost makes it worse. Because at least with Tommy and Claude, like, you know what you're getting for the most part. They don't come off as, like, necessarily sympathetic. But Carl can be, and then he just turns around and does really fucked up shit like that. So I can't give him a crazy high relatability. I feel like I'm, I'm leaning towards a three or a four. I guess I'll give him a. I don't know. A four seems kind of high. We're just we're just gonna keep scaling up in relatability. I guess I'm gonna give him a three. Three for relatability. So all right fun to play as. Yeah, I like the fact that he does it just for Loke. Yeah, like, that's, that's, it's fucked up. Arguably, it's just bad writing or, like, you know, inconsistent writing and they, maybe they didn't intend to keep it in or, or whatever, who knows. But it's in there, so you gotta count it. And it's pretty fucking messed up. But let's say, okay, so fun to play as, though. I mean, Carl's definitely fun to play as. He's got some of the funniest dialogue as a protagonist. That's for sure. Hmm. Oh, this is this is getting harder. This is only gonna get harder as we go on. I mean, I love to play as CJ, but I feel like I kind of like to play as Tommy a little bit more. Hmm. That would mean I gave Tommy a seven. I think I'm gonna put Carl on the same levels. Ah. Oh, this is tough. You know what, I'm gonna put Carl on the same level as Tommy. I'm gonna give him a seven. Seven fun to play as. Cause, I don't know, like, I feel like part of, you know what, you know what, no, 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 six. I'm gonna give him a six. And this, this is because I get, I get a little bit of the, like the cognitive dissonance with, with Carl. Like the whole, what's that fucking annoying ass terms? Ludo narrative dissonance. You know, cause again, sometimes Carl comes off as like, just a guy who fell into the, the gang culture and, you know, kills people because that's all he knows. And then other times he does crazy psycho shit like fucking Mad Dog's manager. So, because of that, I don't always know how, like, how I should play as Carl because, you know, I have this habit to kind of roleplay as whoever I'm playing as. And the more their actions in the, in the missions and in the game are congruent with the way that they're portrayed, the more fun I tend to have, I think. Um, as an experience, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Carl a six. So just below Tommy. Oh, I don't give a shit. All the, all the San Andreas fans who think that I, like, hate San Andreas because it's not my favorite game of all time can suck a dick or do something that's more 
PC that you find insulting to your own personal preferences. Get the fuck out of here. I love San Andreas. It's just not my favorite. <laughs> man, the San Andreas fans can get mad, man. I had a difficult childhood. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right, so let's move on. Move on to somebody I don't think I'll have nearly as much to say about, but it's the nature of a small game. Because next, we got your boy Mike. Mike, last name withheld. I've been, uh, there's been at least one person who's like relentlessly tried to convince me in the comments that Mike's last name is like default or something like that. I'm like, no. No. Or so something like that. Like, his last name is no. Like, no. As far as I know, everything I can find, there is no known last name for Mike. Mike from Advance, yeah. So, how relatable is Mike? Well, I mean. Alright, so I gotta draw my knowledge here from what Mike actually does in specifics. I mean, there's not a whole lot that we know. We really don't know that much. I mean, we know that he. He basically was raised on the streets, from what I remember. He just fucking like like well, it's not quite said that Vinny raised him, but it's heavily implied that Vinny like took him in at a young age. I don't think it's ever we ever learned that uh, like Mike's parents or anything about them or anything like that. I can't remember, and I and I made the fucking episode that's playing on the screen right now. But I don't remember. Like we don't really don't know that much about Mike. I mean, GTA Advance has more story than GTA One and Two. But it's still not very much story. And we really only get this little brief window into what Mike's life would have been like. So, but he, I mean, like, does Mike do a bunch of psycho shit? He does do a decent amount of psycho shit, but I feel like, at least from my memory, he doesn't do nearly as much psycho shit as Claude or as Tommy or even or Carl. Mm -hmm. His name is Mike Grand Theft Auto Advance. What, what a long... Oh, okay, sorry. His full name is Mike Grand Theft Auto Advance, released only on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance in 2004. A very long last name. It's, it comes from a very strange family. Mike Mikeson. There you go, yeah. So, I don't know. Since we don't know very much, we know he gets into crime, he's kind of like dragged into the mafia world at a young age, and then he kind of just becomes reliant on that. He's very naive in that sense. So... I feel like he can get... Uh, ooh. I'm tempted to give him a 4. But he doesn't really do all that much. I feel like I can't... I'm going to give him a 3. 3 on relatability. Still not all that much. Alright, and then fun to play as... I mean... GTA Advance is fun, but it's fun for what it is. And you don't get the same kind of like... You know, he doesn't have like a lot of dialogue. It doesn't have any dialogue when you're running around doing shit. You know, it's a fucking, like a 2D era type game. So, fun to play as, like, three. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, I don't mean to do you dirty like that, Mike, but that's just how the way, that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know, as, as Bruce Almighty would say, or something like that. Okay, moving on. Moving on. So, <laughs> next, we have, who is probably the, one of the contenders, I'd say there's three characters that are the contenders for the most psycho protagonists. We, the first one, that we, we already covered, is Claude. Just wanted to say, discovered your channel recently, I've learned a ton and had a blast in the process. Thank you, th you're, you're very welcome, and thank you for watching The Patient Wolf. Glad you enjoyed it. Glad you're enjoying it. Okay, so... A character that is arguably, you know, in the in the top three for, for most psycho characters of the protagonists. Tony motherfucking Cipriani. Chicken Cipriani as the stream veterans would know him as. Or sorry, that's his alternate persona when he becomes a superhero at nighttime. But Tony Cipriani is... Yeah, you know what? Raphael already said it, and I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go with zero relatability on Tony just right off the bat. There's effectively nothing about Tony's life that I can relate to. Um, like, effectively nothing. Like, I guess at the most, like, I don't have a great relationship with my mom, but she's never tried to put a hit on me, at least not yet. 
So, you know, it's still significantly better than, uh, than Mr. Tony right here. So, I don't know, man. There's just really nothing that Tony does that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's something I would do. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember a part of my life that's kind of like this. Like, no. Sorry, Tony. I mean, he's just too... The, the mafia life, you know, the fucking insane problems with his mom, the absolute psychopathy, and does Tony have anybody that he shows genuine affection for? I guess maybe Salvatore. I guess maybe Salvatore. I guess his mom, which is kind of fucked up. But, man, now fun to play as, however. You don't relate to helping a corrupt cannibal politician rig an election while wearing a chicken suit? That's true. That is very relatable. I mean, if, I, <laughs> I think we can all relate to that, can't we? But, fun to play as. Tony is definitely fun to play as. I think, again, similar to the reasons that Claude is fun to play as, it's fun to just be able to be like a complete psycho in the world of GTA and not feel like it, it doesn't fit the character of playing as. So when I play as Tony, I tend to do whatever the fuck I want, which is fun for its own reasons and in its own right. Yeah, he blew up a... He, he literally blew up... It would be the equivalent of a man blowing up the entirety of Little Italy in New York. Just the entirety of it. Just no more Little Italy, because one guy set off a series... I guess not one guy. He had help from 8-Ball and that, but still. Effectively, one guy blew up the entirety of a fucking New York neighborhood. So he's a terrorist psychopath Zero relatability. Fun to play as, though. I gotta give him at least what I gave Claude. In fact, I think I like playing him as him more than Claude. I'm gonna give him a 7. I'm gonna put him on par with, uh... With, uh, Tommy. Because I definitely enjoy playing as, as Tony. If only it was easier to play as... I guess these days with real CS it's easier, but... Anyone who, who watched the live streams for that knows that it did not end well, so... All right, we're going to move on to the next one. But before we do that, I'm going to really quick blow my fucking nose here. Alright y'all, before we move on, just want to remind you that I'm a broke ass motherfucker and I really need y'all's support. And if you guys want to see me continue to keep doing this kind of stuff, not only videos like this, but this season of GTA Biographies and everything else I'm working on, I would very, very much appreciate it if you would, m most importantly, donations are great, but I would appreciate it the most if you'd sign up on Patreon, you get something out of it too, you get access to all of the music I've made for the series. And it is a, in a high-quality, often extended format. You also get early access to videos. And my internal great gratitude. Gratitude? I almost said gratitude. But seriously, guys, I really appreciate any support. If you cannot support me, please don't feel bad. I hate even having to ask. But I gotta ask. Because shit is tight. Alright, moving on. Excuse me. Alright. So, LCS theme is one of the best. Yes, it is. Moving on to Vice City Stories. This is another reason why I usually don't, uh, or why it's better to record stuff rather than streams, because I sound like shit. I, when I record it, I, I get the best takes. But, yeah, this is all an experiment. Anyway, now we're on to Mr. Victor Vance, Vice City Stories. And this will be the first one, you know, actually... Because I, really, I didn't plan, like, I have a plan for, you know, how I was going to structure this, but I haven't really thought a whole lot about this in the way that I, I, the structure I set up. So, I'm thinking about it now, in terms of relatability. And, you know, I often say Vic and Nico are probably the ones that are most relatable. And I don't necessarily think, with at least with the criteria of relatability, that I can give Vic a high score. Um, or at least not in terms of what his life was like. Now... 
what I would, because what I normally would say is he's definitely more, he's more empathetic. Like, I can understand him, and I, I can understand him more. But I wouldn't necessarily let me say that means I can relate to him more. Because um, Vic does a whole lot of shit that I would definitely not even consider doing. Yeah, he's probably one of the most moral, but he's still a GTA protagonist. So, but him being, you know, more moral doesn't necessarily mean that he's relatable. And those are the criteria I set out. So, in terms of relatability, let's see. So, Vic, he, you know, lives a pretty poor life. He has shitty, uh, shitty parents, really shitty mother, really a pretty shitty brother, and ends up in the military to try and support his family, and just generally learns how to do bad shit to keep his family alive. So, doing a bunch of bad shit for, at least on the surface, good reasons. That's relatable to, a, to an extent. So, that's probably where the, the most relatable that he will get to me. Because beyond that, he starts a fucking drug empire and, you know, does shit like run prostitution rings. And that's not relatable to me. I don't know about y'all. So again, given the criteria I set out here, Vic's 10 out of 10 relatable. He likes emotion 98.3. That's true. I gotta give him at least one point for that. For his good taste in music. But, okay, so let's see what are my scores I gave to the everyone else here. So, well, I do think he probably deserves to get the highest relatability score so far, but I don't, I still don't think it's going to be super high. I think I'm going to give him a 5. I'm going to give him a 5. Which still feels a little bit high, because again, there's a whole lot of shit that Victor does that I would never do or think to do. But I, I think a 5 feels pretty good for relatability. Again, for me, the thing that... Because when I talk about, you know, in other streams, usually, um, who my favorite protagonists up, usually Victor and Nico come up a lot, because those are usually my answers. And it's not necessarily because I relate to Vic again. It's because I think I understand Vic more, and I relate to... Not relate to his life, relate to maybe more so than others, anyway. Not because not a whole lot, but more so than the other protagonists, the decisions they make, why they make them. But I still wouldn't make, like, you know, or probably even be tempted to make half the decisions he makes. I'd make very different ones, but I don't know. Again, I'm thinking about this now based on the criteria that I set out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep, keep him on a five for that. Yeah, relatability isn't super common. Like, I don't think anybody, well, we'll get to it, but it's not going to get super hard. Nobody's going to get a ten in relatability, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now fun to play as. Um... Well, actually, see here, this is where it gets kind of weird, because, like I said before, one of the things that makes a character in GTA fun to play as, for me, is when the way they're presented and the way, you know, what you're doing in the missions and the gameplay match, and Victor very much doesn't match. Um, he doesn't act like the kind of guy that would go on his rampages. Like, I, I, I always feel like half of Victor's lines that he'll say to NPCs when he's killing them and shit feels so out of place. Like... Oh yeah, now you're mortuary meat or like weird shit. It feels like Vic like being possessed and saying that shit because it's not the kind of he never acts like that in cutscenes ever. Like he would say that kind of stuff. So that makes him less fun to play as for me. So not like no fun to play as, but less fun to play as. So I think I'm gonna give him an, a, another five. Solid fives across the board for Mr. Victor Vance. So we're gonna, we're gonna later on we're gonna add it all up and we'll see who is technically my favorite or at least who wins this contest for today but that's gonna be it for victor and we're gonna move on to what will probably be one of the more well not contentious but interesting ones ya boy not that guy that guy hold on i gotta blow my fucking nose again one second Alright, so we have our boy, Nico Bellic. Now, like I said, I'm now thinking about this in terms of the criteria that I set out at the beginning of this, which means relatability and fun to play as. So, relatability. 
Well, for Nico, I'm thinking about relatability in terms of how much my life was like their theirs, or how much I could imagine myself doing similar things to them if I had a life like theirs. And, yes, oh yes, and happy birthday, happy 15 year fucking anniversary to GTA 4, guys. That is today, 15 fucking years old. Nico, you're all, you're, you're getting there, you're almost a fully grown man, sort of. You, know, you got a few more years on you, Nico. <laughs> but, for an annoying dick, you're really an annoying dick. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so Nico, Nico Belli, how relatable is he? To me, specifically. Well, again, I'm imagining my, I had a life like his. I definitely can't relate very much to growing up in a war-torn country and, like, you know, having to see your friends and classmates turned into fucking enemy combatants and shit. Like, that's completely unrelatable to me. So, I'm starting to think that these criteria I set out aren't necessarily going to reflect, you know, who my favorite is all that accurately. But, based on these criteria, I don't know, he's not all that relatable. I'm trying to think what else... I don't have a super strong relationship. I guess I have a strong relationship with my sister. And Nico and Roman are effectively like brothers. So I can relate to that, having a really strong bond with a with like a sibling or, or a close family member. So that's relatable. Definitely. Uh, and you know what? And, and even if I wouldn't go the fucking full, like, you know, <laughs> take over the fucking city, become a criminal contractor, and, and, and fight a guy on fucking next to the Statue of Liberty, um, I relate to at least wanting revenge. You know, I don't exactly make a habit of, of carrying out or trying to get revenge, because it's never productive, but I certainly feel the need, the, the, the desire for revenge quite strongly at times. So, I can relate to that. So, now you know, I'm thinking about it, you know, I guess Nico is, at least for a GTA protagonist, pretty relatable. So let's see. So, so I gave Vic a 5. I'm going to give Nico a 6. Again, even a 7 feels high. But 6 is still the highest score we've gotten so far for relatability. So then it comes fun to play as. Well. I mean... <laughs> I'm struggling to find a reason not to give him a fucking 9 or a 10. Because I think Nico is probably... Hmm... Ooh, oh, now I'm thinking about Louise, too. Louise, I really like... Um, I think I'm going to give Nico an 8. An 8 feels about right. Like, I love to play as Nico. Oh, I'm tempted to give him a 9. I'm tempted to do it. This is what the dream feels like. This is the victory we long for. Exactly. No, we long we long for donations. <laughs> We, we long for stream donations, you fox! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But anyway, so he's definitely a lot of fun to play as. Uh, do I go with an 8 or a 9? I think I'm going to keep it at an 8. Although, you know what? The scale is 1 to 10, with for the, at least for the fun scale. It's not like 10 is, is impossible to have any more fun with a game in general. It's like on the scale of 1 to 10 for... For this, for these videos, for for GTA games, so I think I will give Nico a nine. I think that's 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 fine for fun to play at. So six and ah, wow. Okay, I swear that was not a purpose, but Nico's score is six and nine. <laughs> six and nine. Okay, let's move on. Actually, that's gonna be very loud. I'm not gonna let that one play in the background. Let this one play instead. Okay. So moving on to a character I have probably some of the least amount of experience with that I only really got to know more um, in the last couple of years when I did um, biographies. And that, hey, hey, get out of here, Guinness. You're not supposed to be on screen. And that is Mr. Johnny Clevens here. Now, obviously, I remember Johnny from, uh, from GTA 4, but he never really left a big impression on me. And for those who don't know, I didn't play Lost in the Damned back when it came out. I played Ballad of Gay Tony when it came out. But for whatever reason, I wasn't really into biker shit back then. And so when Lost in the Damned, I remember when Lost in the Damned came out. And it just didn't intrigue me enough. So I didn't play it. 
and then I, I finally played through it for the first time, really, like, like, paying attention to it when I did, um, when I did the biographies episode on Johnny. So, he's kind of like, it feels like the freshest one, like, he's the one, I've, I've, like, him and Mike, you know, I barely knew anything about, I guess I knew more about Johnny than fucking Mike, to be fair, but still. Okay, so, relatability. Well, I gotta go with a risky. He's gonna get a really low rating again. I, I think I'm gonna... My, my instinct is to go with a 1. Because I really don't relate to... I mean, there's a certain sort of a tough guy bullshit, macho bullshit thing in all the GTA protagonists. But Johnny might have some of the worst of that macho bullshit going on. And I really don't relate to that. Uh, you know what? I'm trying to think of a reason why why I shouldn't just give him a zero. Is there anything I actually relate to about Johnny's life? Not really. He might not be as much of a psycho as Tony, but... No, you know what? Zero. Zero for relatability. There's just nothing about Johnny's life that's anything like what my life is like or what anything like I feel like I would do. He's just completely... Completely different for me in every single way. So, yeah, zero for relatability. Now, fun to play as. Um, I mean, he's decently fun to play as. I feel like he's he's got a little bit of that Tony, you know, he is kind of feels like a psycho. But then he also has, you know, certain characters he relates to that makes him more human. Like Ashley and like, uh, like Jim. But it doesn't feel like it. But it doesn't feel like it disconnects from the way he's presented. Like, it makes sense that he only has those few people that he cares about. Like, he makes sense. He feels consistent as a character, which is usually something I really enjoy. So I'm gonna say actually. Let's see. I gave Tony a seven. I'm gonna give him a six. Six for fun to play as. That feels about right. He's hilarious. I feel like Johnny's decently funny. Yeah. If I go with hilarious, but you know. All right, moving on. All right, one of my favorites. Not that guy. That guy. Well, actually, I think that's supposed to be him. Louise, my boy. Even though I've said that for like all of them. <laughs> it's your boy, Louise Lopez. All right. So again, I'm now thinking about this, you know, more specifically in terms of the criteria I've set up for the video, and because of that, I mean, Louise is definitely one of my favorites. So he's almost, he's definitely gonna get, get a high. In fact, I might even do his fun to play as level first, because I love to play as Louise. Hmm. All right, let's see. What did I? I gave Nico a nine. I feel like I'm gonna give Louise a nine as well for fun to play as. Cause I love playing as Louise. Like I fucking I love Balladgate Tony. It's arguably one of my favorite GTAs, if not my favorite GT GTA, especially if you consider it separate from Four. Now relatability, on the other hand, um, again, being honest and the way I've been thinking about it, the way I've been using the score system so far, he's really not all that relatable to me at all. Um, I don't. <laughs> You know, he's got a strong relationship with his with his uh, family, at least with his mother. Um, he's a, he deals drugs, and he's he's not quite a psycho, but he, he doesn't have a lot of... He has almost no remorse for any of the shit that he does. He does it, it, he, I get the impression that, you know, maybe some part of him thinks it's bad, but he doesn't care because he's like, you know, got to do what you got to do kind of thing. Kind of like Nico, but with less remorse than even Nico has. Um... And, like, I don't know, I, I definitely can't relate to being a fucking bodyguard or a drug dealer. I'm trying to think of anything that Tony, that Luis does in his life that I actually find genuinely relatable. It's not a lot. What should I give him here? Um, I give Mike a three. Carl a three. I feel like I'm going to put him on that level, a three. That feels about right. Relatability, three. Yeah. A lot of fun to play as, but...
but not super relatable. I love me, I love me some fucking Louise. Louise is great, but he's definitely not like a character I, I feel like I can see myself living a similar life, even if I was like raised under similar conditions or circumstances. So we're gonna go with that. All right, moving on. All right, let's see here. And once again, we're going to be coming to a character who is really not relatable at all, actually. We come to Mr. Huang Li. We're going to jump up here. And Huang Li is really not relatable at all to me. In fact, my instinct is to give him a zero. Huang's got like that major psycho thing going on, kind of like a Johnny or a Tony. You hate the Chinatown Wars theme? Really? Well, for one thing, mine's mine's a little bit different. It's because I couldn't remake it perfectly, but it's it's certainly different than a lot of the other themes. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say zero again for relatability with Huang. Huang is like a spoiled rich kid. He's like he's kind of ruthless. Who does Huang show affection for? Um, I guess. Hmm. Not really anybody. Does Huang ever show affection for anyone? Like, genuinely? Oh, um. Well. Uh, what's her name? Oh, what's her name? That gets killed. Oh, fuck, what's her name? I can't remember her name, but she gets killed behind Kenny's shop. And he seemed to actually be kind of, like, bothered. Lit, lit, Ling, yeah. That's, like, the only person that Huang ever shows any genuine affection for. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with zero for relatability. He just doesn't do anything that, like, is even remotely similar to my life, or feels like would happen to me in my life. Chinatown Wars was on the DS, instant 9 out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can be arrogant, but I'm not like, I've never been snotty, or at least not nearly as snotty as that, and I find him, while I find it entertaining in the capacity of the game, a person like that in real life I would find beyond obnoxious. Now, fun to play as. Actually, Huang is a lot of fun to play as. Again, similar to that whole Johnny, Tony thing, you know, He's kind of got the psycho thing going on, but there's no, like, cognitive dissonance. Like, it feels like he would be that psycho. Or, like, not give a shit about... He's got, like, you know, rich... What's what's, what's that fucking kid that got off of uh, killing somebody in a car accident because he was, like, too rich to understand the consequences? It was, like, uh, some ridiculous word. What the fuck was that term that they came up with? I can't remember it. Affluenza. Affluenza. Huang Li's got a, a case of affluenza, dude. But it works for, like, the game, you know, like... So, I'm gonna go with fun to play as. Hmm. I'm gonna go with an 8. Actually. What, what did I give a 7? Did I give Tony a 7? Yeah, I, I really like playing as Huang. Selling drugs was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 8 for fun to play as. Relatability 0. I think that seems fair. Alright. Moving on. Okay, so now we have the first of our three GTA V protagonists. We have Mr. Franklin Clinton. Now, by the time we get to the GTA V era here, we actually do know a decent amount, for the most part, about all of their lives. Enough, and none of them, well, okay, Trevor. We'll get to Trevor. All right, let's stick with Franklin. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So Franklin. Similar to Carl, but I feel like I can... You know what? Yeah, thinking about it now in terms of the relatability category, I can relate to Franklin a whole lot more than, say, a Carl. Because while Franklin fell into the gang shit, it always feels like Franklin's heart was never in the gang shit. His heart was in being a fucking CEO, being the boss, being a, a leader. And that that is definitely something I relate to. I've always been kind of like... Had big dreams and, you know, thought about, like starting shit, making shit for myself. I mean, that's part of why I made this channel. So I can relate to that sort of 
uh, for lack of a better word, entrepreneurial spirit. I don't actually like the money part, but you know, the ambition of wanting to do something to make a name for yourself, have a reputation. I can relate to that a lot more than, than CJ. Um, and then he doesn't really do what's the most psycho thing that Franklin really does? I'm trying to think. What's the most messed up thing Franklin does? Um I don't know. I feel like I gotta give him a high score. Oh boy. Yeah, I gotta feel like I gotta give him a high score for relatability. I mean at least for as far as GTA protagonists go. I feel like I gotta give him at least as high as Nico. What do I give Nico? I give Nico a six. Mm. I think I'm gonna give Franklin a seven. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give Franklin a seven. Now, fun to play as. My psycho thing he did was start off with that yes haircut. Um, now fun to play as. I mean, I definitely have fun playing as, as Franklin, but if I'm being honest, when I play GTA 5, I tend to want to play as Michael the most. So... Oh, man, this is difficult. I'm going to give him a 7. 7, 7, and 7. Franklin's got the lucky 7s. Yeah, both 7, yeah. I agree with you, Raphael. 7 and 7. Yeah, that seems about right. Because there's like a little bit of that cognitive dissonance thing going on. Like, I feel like I can't be too much of a psycho with Franklin because he feels like more of a real person that doesn't necessarily like, you know, reacts more appropriately to when crazy shit is going on around him and doesn't, you know, hesitates to pull the trigger on people every now and again as much as he'll pull the trigger. He's definitely got some, I mean, the GTA protagonists, you know, like they all got some psycho going on. That's true. Franklin's driving is so satisfying, even if it is like, you know, total cheating but it's yeah it's super fun especially when you like abuse it to go super fast like that's fun as fuck so yeah I feel like 7 and 7 feels about right yeah alright let's move on uh, excuse me uh, oh my goodness gracious me alright next we got the witness protection man himself we got Michael Townley slash DeSanta. So, Michael is kind of a heartless evil bastard to a certain extent. I mean, they're all GTA protagonists again. But, again, thinking about this from the relatability category, I cannot relate to Michael very much at all. Um, no, like, I mean, I don't want... I never wanted a fucking mansion. I mean, having a nice house would be nice. Having a fucking... I don't want to live in California. I don't want to live in a fucking mansion. I guess I relate to his... His desire for reputation. But clearly that was not his biggest thing. He had more fun doing the thing. And not as much fun from... Just getting recognized for doing it. Like, let's say, with Franklin. So I, don't, I really don't feel like I can give Michael a very high relatability score. I'm trying to think of what else Michael does that I do find relatable. Um, marrying a hooker? Like, no. Um, no, I really don't find him very relatable at all. Like, he does a lot of fucking messed up shit that would be so far from anything I would do. I can't give him a... I don't feel like I give him a zero, though. I give him a two. I feel like a two feels about right for relatability for Michael. I mean, his daughter is not also a hooker. His daughter was like, you know, not, not a hooker. All right, anyway. Okay, and now fun to play as, though. I definitely have a lot of fun playing as Michael. I feel like I have to give him at least an 8. I don't think I can put him at, at a 9, but I feel like an 8 feels about right for Michael. Again, I would play as him a little bit more than I would play as Franklin. Or enjoy playing as him a little bit more than Franklin. And there's not a whole lot of cognitive dissonance. I feel like Frank Michael's got a good balance of both. Feels like a real person for the most part, but also feels like he would do the GTA protagonist psycho shit without... I mean, that's part of what the, the, the whole therapist thing, right? So, 
I'm gonna say fun to play as, yeah, eight. That feels that feels right, yeah. So two and eight. Alright, alright. Let's move on to the final character for today. Hold on. Oh, what a great spot to jump to there. <laughs> So now, finally for tonight, we have Trevor Phillips. I'm just gonna go out right off the bat here. You know what? No, I was gonna I was gonna throw down a zero, but him being Canadian, he has to get a, at least a one, one for relatability, but only for his Canadianness and for nothing else. Because unsurprisingly, there's effectively nothing about Trevor's life that I can relate to. Trevor is a straight ten for being a GD protagonist, voice lines being a menace. Well, see, in terms of fun to play as, I'm tempted to give him a 10 in terms of fun to play as. Um, because I do have a lot of fun playing as, but like, like I said, you know, I played as Michael probably the most last time, last few times I played GTA 5, but it's probably Michael than Trevor the most, like Michael than Trevor than Franklin that I enjoy playing as the most. But like, when, when being, a, being a psycho as Trevor is a lot of fun. And he's hilarious. I feel like I gotta give him a 9. I know it doesn't make sense based on the fact that I said I play as Michael Moore from, from the last one. But I feel like fun to play as... I, I'm almost tempted to go full 10. But 9 feels good. I mean, I, I, I love Trevor as a character to play as. But definitely... And you know what, I think I'm gonna take off the meme and bring it down to a 0 for relatability again. Because the Canadianness is not enough to, to hold it over. Because again, there's nothing about Trevor's life that I can relate to effectively at all. Alright. So. Let's take a look at what we got here. Come on. Alright, y'all. So here are our final scores. So we've got... Claude, who gets a 7 out of 23, or out of 20, out of 23. I guess if we, we're, we're adding them together and then seeing what their total is, we got 7 for Claude. So I'm going to write this one. Claude gets a 7. Oh, God damn it, I can't type. I'm typing with one hand, forgive me. All right, Claude gets a 7. Tommy gets a 2 for relatability, 7 for fun, gets him a 9. Oh yeah, Claude got a 1 for relatability, 6 for fun, that's a 7. Tommy got 2 relatability, fun 7, 9. Carl gets 3 for relatability, 6 for fun, that's another 9. Mike gets 3 and 3, puts him on 6. Tony gets 0 and 7, so 7. Victor gets 5 and 5, that's 10. So, so Victor is now on the lead. Nico gets 6 and 9, <laughs> which means he now gets 15, which puts Nico in the lead. Johnny gets 6, because he gets 0 and 6. Luis gets 3 and 9, puts him at 12. Respectable. Juan gets 0 and 8, puts him at 8. Franklin gets 2 7s, which means he's 14. Michael gets 2 and 8, which puts him at 10. And Trevor gets 0 and 9, which puts him at 9. So, at least according to this this list as we set it out, my favorite is Nico, unsurprisingly, followed by Franklin, followed by Luis, right? Yep. And Victor actually only got a 10. Poor Vic. All right, y'all. Well, no donations. Y'all, y'all disappoint me. I mean, I, I, should, I should say that. I, I appreciate all y'all's support. I'm just fucking, goddamn, I'm desperate for money. I'm barely gonna, f I, I'm not even, oh, uh, I'm so, next month's gonna be fucking hard again. So anyway, if, if you fucking, you enjoy what I do, and you want to support me, throw in some donations down below, or sign up on Patreon. But thank you for tuning in nonetheless, even those of you who can't or don't want to support me. And I will probably be editing this down into a, a single video or just leaving it up as it is as a live stream and we might try this more in the future we seem to get a decent amount of viewers for this so 
we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this sort of live video format. I'm not going to be, this isn't going to be replacing like, you know, GTA biographies, but I think for some of the ideas that I have like this, where it would just be better for me to rant about it, it might actually be better to do with them as little live streams. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And I will see you guys maybe tomorrow for a actual game stream. Maybe. Peace out. Have yourselves a wonderful evening.